You are listening to Tech Ed TV Podcast Series. This show is brought to you by Eagle Communications from Walker Tom Ford. Hey, well, um, today's podcast is uh, about what's 5G. So what it is in the 5G specification that's uh, so interesting and so um, new that makes uh, us understand uh, what is that 5G uh, uh, logo that we see in many of our phones, in our many of our iPhones, that uh, if you're a subscriber from AT&T, that you're likely to see that, that sign that says 5GE on the right upper corner of your phone. 5G is nothing but the fifth generation of wireless communications standard. In fact, uh, uh, there is a mapping created by the 5G system that um, is um, uh, basically specifies everything that is on the 3GPP or the third generation partnership program that um, brings us uh, several technologies that are uh, more advanced than the fourth generation uh, standard or the 4G. The 5G specification is mostly uh, what is called the release 15 or release 16 of the 3GPP standard. So that's uh, something that comes very handy when we uh, understand that the initial communications uh, system, for example, were a much lower releases of the same standard. Obviously, the incremental value of each release brings more um, opportunities and more technologies that are going to just make things better for us as um, listeners uh, or sorry as experimental uh, users or uh, subscribers of a certain system 4g indeed corresponds to a mapping made by the 3g or 3gpp organization or the third generation partnership program project uh, to the label releases 8 through like about 12 or 13, whereas the 5G standard correspond to releases 15 or 16. Um, but there is a little bit of a blurry um, coverage area, if we can say that terminology, to uh, determine what release 14 or release 16 are in fact uh, covering. For example, release 14 of the same standard includes technologies that are related to the Internet of Things, which is IoT, or Smart Things, Vehicle to Everything, which is uh, supposed to be a, a, a new feature for 5G, as well as other radio improvements that bring this new uh, innovation to practice. Um, the main thing that we have to remember is that the 5G logo that we see in the uh, AT&T uh, uh, phones is not the 5G NR or the 5G, 5G new radio that um, usually the modern systems will relate to. So when we go to a conference, for example, to Mobile World Congress or the Consumer Electronics Show, for instance, and they present to us with a 5G phone, refers that that 5G phone can connect to the 5G new radio. That uh, brings a lot of differences between 4G and 5G new radio. The main difference, a substantial difference, is bandwidth. In fact, uh, bandwidth in 5G is in the expected to be in the 5 gigabits, uh, or 2.5 gigabits per second, for example, which is um, a very, very high velocity for downloading a movie. Right now, if you test your phone, or your 4G phone, you may obtain about 30 megabits uh, uh, per second of download speeds or even upload speeds, whereas in the 5G world you will get one gigabit or two gigabits or even higher. Another interesting uh, difference that is brought to um, the standard is the software uh, as a service implementation, in other words. The 5G specification brings something called ne Network Function Virtualization, or NFV, as part of the uh, mechanism that control the phone, that control the network in general. The phones then connect to a, a network that runs now in um, 
virtualized environment or what is called the cloud. So the virtualization not necessarily brings the cloud. However, the cloud cannot exist without virtualization. It's kind of like a conundrum. However, the virtualization systems that are created with this, um, with this new computing system enables the carriers or the manufacturers to create uh, what is called uh, network entities. For example, the mobility management engine, the packet gateway uh, or system, the routing protocols, everything done as a level of the software entity. So in other words, before, like in the past, when we had GSM or, or, or UMTS or even uh, CDMA standards, then there were multiple boxes. There were multiple uh, specific hardware devices that were being built to run each and every single component of the network. And um, that was kind of expensive and it was very limited as the interfaces to those components was mostly proprietary. Now, today, with virtualization, any just regular server that you can purchase on Amazon or you can run in Amazon Cloud, for example, or you can run in Azure Cloud, or you can run in any of the cloud environments that we know today, it is possible then to create a total new network, a network infrastructure, or what is called a core, to run in the cloud. This cloud basically environment enables uh, other aspects of uh, uh, virtualization. Basically, you can have multiple networks running simultaneously, which defines uh, multiple software-defined networks. In a way, a software-defined network is nothing but a virtual network that runs on top of the real hardware. So one set of hardware can run two, three, four, five, or and different uh, software-defined networks in the same hardware. That brings a new advantage because then uh, the, the virtualization of the hardware uh, enables uh, the use of other tools that are already being used for cloud-based environments. Um, those tools are, for example, Kubernetes or OpenStack or any other of those technologies that form clouds and this mechanism in the telecommunication world is called orchestration. It was like an, or, or, or like an orchestration is the, is the process by which the configuration, coordination, and management of the computer system is um, basically handled by some sort of a tool or some sort of a, a, a software package that handles this type of uh, engineering. So in, in, in many ways, uh, one of the other aspects of this uh, this technology, the virtualization, is that uh, as you can just run any server anywhere to connect to the network, then why not move resources closer to the base station? In other words, is it possible then to move computing power next to the tower instead of just all the computing power be in a remote location at the central office of the carrier? And the answer is yes. And this term that it was coined as part of this uh, process of bringing computational power next to the base station is called edge computing. Edge computing is nothing new. In fact, when we um, connect to Netflix or Hulu and we stream a video, copies of the video or the movie are being sent from Hulu or Netflix as, um, as copies of the, those to what is called a content delivery network. This content delivery network brings the files closer to you by making copies of those images or those video files nearby your your phone or nearby your your smart TV. That means that then it's less latency and it's more more efficient that way. However, bringing data to uh, closer to a device is not the same as bringing bringing computation closer to a device. And be bringing computation, although it makes it more complex, then uh, the computation now is, um, is possible. So now you can separate, for example, certain amount of computation that takes place in the edge of the network, meaning at the base station, and then certain computation that it will take in the infrastructure or at the core of the network. The reason why this is possible now is because uh, now all the network is IP based. In other words, the internet protocol, what we see today in our computers, is now what connects all the base stations and all the elements on the network. 
base station is connected to another base station, base station is connected to a need not be, or connected to an MME, or connected to a gateway, or a series of gateway over IP. In the past, 2G and 3G, even in 3G, although you could see some internet use on 3G, it was called a circuit switch telecommunication network. Circuit switch means that this network is uh, utilizing on the circuits and it doesn't use necessarily data only networks. In other words, the IP layer is emulated on top of, on top of a circuit, just like if you remember, if you recall, when you had a dialog modem back in 1996, 1998, then you will use a circuit switch, which is the, the, the phone line, to emulate uh, data or packets that were running to the internet. So that type of emulation is, is now gone in 4G and obviously in 5G. And then that's a, that's a break another value play to the 5G new networks. So the 5G then, if you can see that, it's a combination of multiple technologies. The first one is a, a faster modulation technique that enables gigabit per second download and upload of uh, pictures and movies or your data. And at the same time, in the infrastructure in the back end, then um, is more of a more software defined, more software based, software driven architecture for all the components. That comes to uh, a, 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 a bring a new concepts or old concepts that are managing the clouds. So the cloud, for example, that is being used by Amazon, Google, or Verizon, then is pretty much the same. And organizations like the Open Networking Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization that is. Um, actually created by all these entities is the one that is pushing for an standardization of the software defined network and uh, using something called the open flow protocol the open flow protocol then is the one that controls the cloud computing functionality of these particular networks in the past then uh, another problem that we had is that uh, that uh, uh, we were accustomed to receive a signal from one single antenna in other words, uh, we, we will assume that there was one antenna and the node, uh, the, the base station where we're connected to had at most one antenna where we connected to. But today, in, 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 in recent uh, advances in what is called carrier aggregation, or now in 5G, something called beamforming, is what um, uh, brings us the higher speed because multiple antennas can interact with, uh, the, with your phone simultaneously. In other words, the signal comes from four, five, six different antennas. This is not new. This is something that you can really see today when you purchase a base station for Wi-Fi and your Wi-Fi has maybe your Wi-Fi access point has maybe six antennas or in some cases even nine antennas. That's basically what that means. All those antennas are, are transmitting and receiving simultaneously the information and creating what is called the beamforming. And, and, and managing all the signals simultaneously to enhance performance, reduce noise, and basically make you a better experience, better user experience. Another application that we see a lot in the, in the Mobile World Congress, and I can testify on that because I was a judge for the Mobile World Congress 2019 in Barcelona, and I say I'm a judge right now for the 2020 in Barcelona, then we find that uh, is the low latency uh, capabilities of those networks. The low latency then brings another position, another another proposition value play for the use of robotics, for the use in vehicular control, for the use in general in any sort of remote control application where latency is a factor. Then uh, you can have games that are faster, you will have uh, precision control robotics, you will have more automation in terms of telemedicine, and in general, then, because the latency has decreased substantially in the communication path between your phone and the network, then 5G is, in essence, a better technology. In summary, 5G is something that will bring us uh, three main components, like I summarized in very rough terms. The first one is much higher bandwidth, with multiple antennas interacting with each other, including our phone. B or second, we'll have a network that is mostly virtualized, running on software, using the power of the cloud, and the cloud basically enabling new features for that network. And the third one is that it's a next generation protocol 
that uh, brings low latency and cont remote control applications to work well in this environment as the edge computing of course reduces the latency then this uh, will bring more more plays more applications for example in terms of smart home development in terms of remote monitoring and robotics which is something that we can discuss later in a further uh, in in a, in a future in a future podcast so Thanks again for listening in. This is Dr. Edwin Hernandez, and you'll be listening to Tech Ed TV podcast series. You can find us on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram at, as Tech Ed TV, and you can actually see these podcasts um, visually. And uh, stay tuned. Thanks for listening in.